I'm glad to see all of you guys and it looks like our connection is good. All right, if it's your first time joining me, welcome. I go by the name Tor Tornado. I come in to educate and hopefully inspire healing of the mind, body, and spirit that may have been damaged from abuse-related traumas. Those of you that are with me normally Monday through Friday, welcome back. I hope y'all had a wonderful day. I really did. Busy day. Um, had some different changes that pop up, but you know, you just go with the flow when things pop up, right? Oh, okay, on the 28th, we got Jonah to the 28th, all right? I can harass you uninterrupted, right, until then, because we know that connection, but you know what? We're not even going to speak that out. It's going to be a good connection over in Trinidad. It's going to be no problems for you to tap in and stay connected with the Standing in the Gap family and catch um, the Periscope replays, because I know you will be busy over there. Those of you um, that aren't familiar with our children, the future that is Jones Foundation. She's doing some wonderful, wonderful work out in the uh, California area. Go check out the website. It's Our Children, the Future. It, it's a wonderful organization, you know, and drop a little something in the donation bucket and tell her, Tornado sent me. Just, you know, go click that little boom, that little donate button, right? This is the season for giving. It, it really is. You know, a lot of people are sitting around making their list about, I want this, I want this. Me, I sat and I made a giving list and I actually stopped today. I walked in a store and I got so excited because I saw socks. Yeah, you say socks. I say I got excited because it was six pair for a dollar twenty-five. And I said, This is perfect to go in the token of love bags that mail started. It was actually part of the initiative for last month. But those are great little um actually I can reach them. They're right here, right? So a dollar twenty-five, six pairs of socks. So this I can put this in six bags with a little wash uh, cloth, which works out perfect because the washcloths that I bought they came in all the colors. So I can put the matching washcloth with the matching color on the socks. Isn't that just awesome? Put the five dollar bill in there with the little travel toothpaste um, and keep them, you know, with me. So when we're out and I see somebody that's in need, um, hand them out, right? So we call those the token a love bag. So I was so excited to add, check, mark something off my giving list of supplies because that's what I'm doing for the holidays. And at some point this weekend, I got to go and get me a couple of bands, right? A couple of little bands because we got you got to keep them doing the holidays. Get you a band of ones, fives. Hey, if you can do tens, twenties, and hundreds, grab you some bands, some stacks and keep them with you. That way you can just hand it out and just make it rain during this season. Just give, 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 right? So let's hop into it. Hey, Sarah, where you been, girl? What's going on down there in Florida? They holding you captive? I ain't seen you in a minute. But let's get into it tonight. We're going to talk about a father of many names, right? And if it's your first time, we call it share evangelism. You click those three little dots. That's how you spread the word and share it out and tell people that tornado's on again, right? So tonight, we're going to talk about a father of many names, right? There's, oh, the list is so long, right? And, and I'd like to hear some of the, you know, names that you guys use to refer to our father, right? But what I'm going to do, I've went through some of the scriptural texts and just all throughout the text, there's just hundreds. There's business school has me captive, but I graduate next month. All right, I'm going to be praying on that for a successful graduation. Prayer warriors, intercessors, make sure you keep Sarah on the list and pray for a smooth graduation. I need to send out a box of hats and scar. Hey, Karen, I, I still got you um, on my list uh, for incoming supplies. So anytime you're ready to send it out, you let me know. And especially during this holiday season, those will be great to go off into the token of love bags as well, right? Um, so I welcome it. And, you know, on the website, Tornado Teaches, which way is it? Yeah, TornadoTeaches.com, the address for the P.O. Box, everything is right on that site. If you also want to do it monetary, if you go to the site, there's a button that says donate. You just hit boom. Or if you want to be real, just keep hitting it a couple of times. Boom, boom, boom. Just, just dying till your finger get tired. Hey, hey. Hey, I, who am I to stop your giving, right? <laughs> I, I am not going to get in the way. Donate as much as you like. You can also go over to Fuel by Hope Ministry. She does the same thing. Our sister Mel, go check out her website. If you want to boom, ping that donate button, tell a tornado sent me over here to give a little something. No amount is too small, right? Um, So... 
We're talking about a father of many, many, many names, right? One of the first ones that I came across, right? Um, you know, we, we, the common names, you know, we have Yeshua. Hey, Mother Clark, um, you know, Jehovah Jireh, you know, God, you know, there's just so many names for a gracious God, you know, because there's so many dimensions to our father, right? But as I'm going through Malachi 4 and 2, it refers to him as a healer, right? And this is the time you guys know I have really been diving in, talking about the importance of prayer. And at the end, we're going to tie some of these into a prayer to show you how to go through and you can honor him with these names in prayer, right? So if you look at Malachi 4 and 2, it speaks of our father as a healer. It says, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings and you shall go out and grow fat like stall fed calves. Our father is a healer. We know it. We still see it today. A lot of people like to say, oh, he's not in the healing business no more. He's not in the blessing business. Mm -mm, I just, mm -mm, that's not how any of that works in this camp because I see too many miracles day in and day out. He is still in the healing business and the blessing business, right? Because you can't tell me that it's nothing but our father, our healer, right? As Malachi 4 and 2 says, when someone goes in and they have a tumor one week that's the size of two baseballs put together on their spine, they have somebody to pray, 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 pray. pray. I mean, praying it out over them and they go back and the doctors are uh, scratching their heads saying I don't know what happened I don't know where that went but it's gone what showed as a tumor that I there is no signs of it so our God is still in the healing business amen another name that our father goes by the redeemer right let's look at Isaiah 59 and 20 that's Isaiah 59 and 20 and I know we move through these kind of fast so don't worry you guys know I always leave my replays up so you can go back get your notes in but we're looking at Isaiah Isaiah 59 and verse 20. Our father who has so many names, but Isaiah 59 and 29 calls him the redeemer. The scripture reads, the redeemer will come to Zion and to those who turn from transgression in Jacob says the Lord. So he's a healer. He's our redeemer, right? We can add those to the many, many, many powerful names that we're able to call our father, right? If we look at Psalm 70, and five psalm 70 and five and i have all of them right there our redeemer lives i have all of these marks so i can get to them nice and easy psalm 70 and five right refers to him as the deliverer right so the healer the redeemer our deliverer you know no matter what we're going through you know uh, nowadays it seems like everything has to have a, have a label you know you have to fit into a box you i just gotta slap a label on you got to be something. And I'm like, you can call me whatever you want. Just call me a child of God. Just make sure you put that in there somewhere since you got to slap a label on. And if you're going through something, right, he can deliver you from that. Let's look at it. Psalm 70 and five, but I am poor and needy. Make haste to me. Oh God, you are my help and my deliverer. Oh Lord, do not delay. Amen. That's, ooh, that's a prayer in itself. If you can't pray nothing else, Psalm 70 and five, just rock, get into the worship and pray that over and over uh, and just worship to him. But I am poor and needy. Father God, make haste to me. Oh God, don't delay in coming to me. You are my help and my deliverer. Nobody can bring me through this storm, but you father god oh lord do not delay with deliverance upon my life oh that's a prayer in itself right there i'm telling you so we went through he's our healer he's our redeemer he's our deliverer he's also our strength we can call him my strength right and since people like to put labels on everything and you know somebody says well tell me a little bit more about this god you know well what do i come you say you know what i call him my strength because if we look at psalms 4 43 and verse 2 pop over there psalms 43 verse 2 for you are the god of my strength 
Why do you cast me? Hey, Mama Moses, why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Another passage of scripture that's powerful prayer right in itself. For you, Father God, are my strength. Father God, why do you cast me off? Why do I go in mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Why do I allow these people to get into my flesh? Father God, why do I allow these people to get into my soul and spirit? Why is it that when I'm trying to do your work, when I'm trying to carry out my divine mission the enemy tries to come and put me into mourning Woo! you see how you can pray that out well i'm telling you when you're not sure what to pray if you're not sure how to pray as i always say open the word it will open itself up to you and just find you a passage and pray it and if you really want to go in with that one if you jump up to verse one right because we all have things that have happened to us we all have things that have taken place in our lives right you've heard me many times talk about the point where all i could sit and think about was vindictive evil you know revenge after going through almost 19 years of molestation then being raped you know the constant bullying from elementary school all the way up into just about halfway through high school so all I could think about oh revenge one day one day I'm gonna get my revenge but when we get into the word welcome kingdom ambassador that just happened in my house why am I always being attacked when I do good you go right to Psalms 43 and verse two but then if you want to just power that thing up call it the power up verse add uh, verse one psalms 43 one and two vindicate me O god and plead my cause against an ungodly nation deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man father god for you are my god of strength why do you cast me off why do i go and go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy father god remove these people from me for they do not understand however open up their hearts father god use that as vindication to open up their hearts soften their hearts father god to understand to see the wondrous glory to see the power in your name father to see how you are my strength and so that they will ask for some of that same strength right when you go and pray for them in that way right even though we know they're throwing darts you know go in and that's one of the best ways that'll just make him smile ask him to vindicate with his kindness vindicate them with his love right as much as we'd like to see about 10,000 fiery darts set behind them with gasoline draws on amen we just keep it real around here but ask him father God go in and vindicate them with love vindicate them just flood them with it that's how you do that thing that's how that thing works right so we went through he's our healer he's our redeemer he's our deliverer right he's our strength come on now he's also our shelter right when there's nowhere else to run when there's nowhere else to hide come on now somebody he is our shelter how do i know because my word says so if we look at isaiah 25 and 4 isaiah 25 and 4 he is our shelter where are we at here isaiah Yep, 25 and 4. For you have been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shade from the heat. For the blast of the terrible ones is a storm against the wall. He is our shelter. So when you're saying, oh, Jehovah Jireh, oh, Yeshua, oh, you know, whatever, you know, uh, a name that you give. Also add in the fact that he's the healer, the redeemer, the deliverer, that he is strength, right? And that he is our shelter. Hey, Charles, glad to see you. Glad to see you, my brother, Jawaru, right? Because it says right there in the scripture, 25 and four a strength to the needy in his distress a refuge from the storm right because there's been many times when we've tried to run to flesh right to, to shield ourselves from the storm when that didn't solve the problem until we went to our true shelter our true father right that goes by the name of shelter of love of warmth of comfort right until we went to the father and said father god i need you and only you at 
with this moment. Only you. Come on, Jawaru. That's all. Oh, that's 3,208 people. That's gospel evangelism right there. Sharing it out. Right? Going to him as that shelter. Because a lot of the time, you know, we can look not just as flesh for shelter. Sometimes we try and run to that bottle of Jim Dandy, that bottle of Jim Beam, that bottle of wild turkey, right? We want run to that wacky tobacco as the shelter, right? We figure that'll cover our minds enough to take away that pain, that guilt, that shame, whatever it is that we're going through. It'll calm that worry. You know, it'll cure that peace. No, that doesn't do it. Because when all of that stuff wears off, he's still sitting and waiting and saying, come on, come on. I am the shelter that you need. The bottle can't do nothing for you. Those drugs won't do nothing for you. That man laying with that man ain't going to make you feel any better. You're going to feel worse when you get up. As a matter of fact, laying with that woman ain't going to make you feel any better. My brother, you still going to feel the same until you get up. But now when you go to the father, as shelter and as covering. Yes, that was me, but God, mm, come on now, come on now. And let me go back since I got my notes. I want to pull in again, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, as we're going through and calling him all of these glorious names, the healer, the redeemer, the deliverer, our strength, right? Our shelter. Remember, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've done, again, as I said, I went through 19 years years of molestation, sexual abuse, then raped, and then bullied. All of that built up a lot of anger and hatred towards people. Sometimes I'd get a little, sometimes I'd get a little, well, a lot out of kilter, right? You know, like sometimes I would need a Snickers. Y'all know that commercial say I wasn't myself until they ate a Snickers. I, at one point in my life, I needed to eat a whole lot of Snickers because I was not myself, right? Turning to homosexuality for 20 plus years from that, right? right? Because what men had done to me, I didn't want anything to do with men. But God's saying, no, it's time for deliverance, my child. It's time for you to come out of this, right? So when you look at 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, and you may say, but I'm not worthy of him being my deliverer. I'm not wor worthy of him being my redeemer. I'm not worthy of him being a healer for me. The devil is a lie. That's what the enemy wants you to believe. But our scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols, commit adultery, male prostitutes or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, are greedy people, are drunkards, or are abusive, are cheap people. None of these people will inherit the kingdom of God. But this is the part that they leave out in the pulpit. Pastors, my bishops, I'm talking to y'all. This is the part that you need to add in instead of throwing people out of your church into the streets right instead of throwing them out not showing them the love continue the passage pick it up at verse 11 first corinthians 6 and verse 11 after you read them and condemn them and convictualicate them with six through nine bring them home bring them home to the father to the healer to the deliverer to our shelter to our living water bring them home with verse number 11 bishops pastors whatever name you want to go by evangelist whatever title you want to claim bring them home with first corinthians 6 and 11 read it to them and tell them some of you were once like that but you were cleansed you were made holy you were made right with god by calling on the name of the lord jesus christ hey and by the spirit of our god come on now that verse is left out. We condemn, we condemn, we condemn, we condemn. It happened to me. Y'all don't know how many times I was hit with 1 Corinthians 6 through 9, but nobody bothered to say, but hold up, baby girl. Look, verse 11 says, some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. So you are worthy of him being your shelter, right? Pray that I get healed from allergies. 
We will add you to that list, right? Bring it on home with verse 11. You are worthy of being, uh, him being your strength, no matter what you've done, right? The scripture tells us by calling on the name of Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. That's how you bring souls. You leave that 99 and you go after that one by telling them, I don't care how many times you've hit that liquor store and you've went home angry and you may have raised your hand and took it out on your kids, on your wife. You can be delivered from that poison. You are worthy. He can be your strength. He can be your shelter so you don't turn to that bottle and turn into that person that takes things out unnecessarily on your family. Women, he's telling you, you don't have to turn your body around and use it that way. If you did, don't feel ashamed of it. He's saying, I can be your deliverer. I am your strength. Calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our spirit God. Amen. Amen. Woo wee. Come on now. We can also call him our restorer, right? How do I know? Psalms 23 and 3 tells us so. Let's take a look at it here. Psalms 23 and 3. Mm-hmm. Psalms 23 and 3. What does it say? He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Come on now. He is a restorer. He restores my soul. He gave me life back. He gave me breath. Come on now. Come on, right? When I was uh, uh, walking sideways, when I wasn't doing and living quite right, when I wasn't treating people right, you know, when I took on that label and said, well, uh, come on now testify testify now sister bogan i was on that bottle right i've been on a lot of it you know i go in i said well i'm tired of this let me try this over there let me try gin maybe that'll ease the pain that didn't do nothing but turn me ooh into something mm -mm. when they said gin will make you sin gin made me an awful awful person it just brought up all of the anger and seething rage inside of me right but when Father God said, come on back home, my child. This is not your life. I am the medicine that you need. Let me restore your soul, Torah. Come on home. Come on, my child. I'm waiting on you. No matter what you've done on all of those years in between, you ain't got to explain it because I know your heart. Come on home. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Let's look at another one. He's our living water, right? When we're thirsty. Why? John 4 and 10 tells us that. John 4 and 10, Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. All you got to do is call on him, say, Father God, my healer, my redeemer, my deliverer, my restorer, my living water. Come on now. The scripture tells us right there. That's John 4 and 10. Give me a drink. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. All you have to do is open your mouth and say, Lord, I've been dry. I'm parched. I've been thirsty for years. I've been trying to quench my thirst, right? You know how when you're so thirsty and you dehydrate, you go pop open a soda. That don't work. You say, man, I'm still thirsty. So you open another soda and you're th still thirsty. You say, well, let me try a little bit of juice. You drink down half the jug of juice and you're still thirsty. See, I done learned to keep back up pens over here, y'all. See how that one just flew out, <laughs> right? And you still thirsty so you go in you say well man what do i cannot what happens though you go get some water Woo wee so it's it relate that there and you start drinking water start flushing your system out and then you say ah, you know you get that good cold drink of water especially on a hot day when you feel like yeah all your insides is just parched and cracked amen and you drink that cold water and you can't help but go ah right? He's telling us that in John 4 and 10. If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. So all you got to do is ask, right? Just take your big old drink. He's also the Lord who heals. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back up to Exodus. Uh, we're going to go back up to Exodus 15 and 26. Let's take it 
it back to the beginning, right? And he said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians for I am, mm, for I am the Lord who heals you. He is the Lord who heals. Mm -hmm. Scripture says it so. That's Exodus 15 and 26. He's also hope. You can also call him hope. When you sit and you say, you're my redeemer. You, ooh, you are eternal life. You are living water. Father God, you are hope. If you look at Psalm 71 and 5, let's look at 71 and five where we at here psalm 71 and five for you are my hope O lord god you are my trust from my youth for you are my hope O lord god you are my trust from my youth right he's also a god of comfort let's look at romans 15 and 5 and we know this season right here this is a very tricky season especially for those you know who may be still grieving over the loss of a loved one whether it was a recent loss you know a loss from many many years ago it's still a season of loss right so this is a time a season during the holidays when we need uh, our father as a god of comfort and if we look at Romans 15 and 5. Uh, where's my ear here? I got so many pages going, y'all. Romans 15, 5. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded towards one another according to Christ Jesus. Now may the God of patience and and comfort grant you to be like-minded towards one another according to Christ Jesus so during this season think about those people right you may be surrounded with a bunch of family when you're in the checkout line with them 1900,000 carts ask that cashier are you gonna be with family for this holiday season invite somebody in even offer are you gonna be working maybe on the holiday because we know a lot of places don't call down pack up a couple of plates and actually take you know what I'm gonna bring you a little something right take care of people during this season check on them right we know this is a time when people you ever heard from the other uh 300 plus days of the year but during the season a lot of people will start calling the check but right start checking on people and make it a point to regularly do that right it only takes a minute to send a text message to stop what you're doing right and say how you doing just checking in or one of the things you know if you say well man she a talker she may want to talk for two hours the way I do it if I know I don't have a lot of time hey Mail, hey, I ain't, uh, I'm just calling to check in, Rich, real quick, just to see how you're doing. You all right? You good? Just lead out with it like that, and then say, you know what? Maybe I get back. You know, get back. I just wanted to check in, which I ain't trying to hold you, but I just wanted to check. That's how I lead it out. I ain't trying to hold you, but check in with people during this holiday season, right? Our Father, and let's throw in one more here. He is a resting place. Let's look at Jeremiah 50 and 6. He can also go by the name of resting place. Jeremiah 50 and 6. Uh -huh. Here we go. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from the mountain to the hill. They have forgotten their resting place place right there he is a our father he is a resting place right so we can call him a healer a redeemer a deliverer our strength our shelter our restorer that living water right that quenches that thirst that nothing else out in that world can quench right he, uh, uh, the lord who heals uh, uh, he's hope he's our god of comfort right i found that a lot of seniors are depressed and lonely yes you know if you have time pop in you know uh check on the seniors you know invite them over you know if they're able to get out but if not stop by and check on them take them a little something especially you know if they have family that's maybe not able to come into town 
what was it on Facebook? I saw the, maybe that was a few days ago, and I saw the video where the, uh, the oh, it was a older grandpa, and he faked his death to get all of his family to show up. Have you guys seen that? And when they walk into the house, you know, all in tears, thinking, you know, that he's gone and preparing themselves. He has a full Thanksgiving spread laid out, you know, and they're just, you know, then they start hugging him and, you know, he just wanted his family there. That was some dry. I don't know if I could go through that route, you know, putting that kind of pre-grief on somebody knowing that I'm still sitting there, but you know, it was a powerful video. I could get the point behind it. So that's names that we can call our father, right? You can also call him a friend. If you look at Matthew 11 and 19, he's an advocate. If you look at Hebrews 9, nine and 24, right? We know that our God is a father. He's love. If you look at first John four and 16, he's also a mediator in that time of need. First Timothy two verses five and six, right? So let's look at how we can compose these into a prayer and close this out. As always, I thank you guys so much for spending time with me. You could be doing anything else. I hope you heard something that maybe touched your heart a little bit, that maybe opened, you know, maybe changed your focus to say, hmm, I want to know a little bit more about this. I want to do a little bit more research. I'm going to go back, as I always say, and check these receipts. And I, you know, I always say, don't just take my word for it. Go back and check it, right? Because you know, though, I don't add to it. I don't take from it. I get it the way God gave it to us. I read it straight from the word, right? Let's look at this, right? Let's take this into a prayer. If we take all of these names that we call our father and see how we can form and mold this, because I'm really about and really stressing the importance of prayer, praying for others during the holidays, not just for ourselves and I won't. Come on, Joan. Joan says he is my strong box. Come on now. That's what I'm talking about. So let's look at how I would look here if we were to compose these into a prayer. You know, Father God, Lord, I draw close to you today, Father. Grateful that you will draw close to me. You have promised in your word, Father. I long to dwell in your presence. And my desire is for a deeper and more intimate relationship with you, Father God. I want to know you in every way, Father. Every way that you can be known. Father, teach me what I need to learn in order to know you better, Father. I don't want to just be a person who's always learning and never able to come to knowledge and understanding of the truth that is you father god i want to know the truth about who you are because i know that you are near to all who call upon you in truth father god i am open father to whatever it is that you want to do in me whatever works that it is that you have for my life whatever divine assignment that you want to send me on father god i don't want to be limited father by you i don't want to limit you father god and your purpose in my life by neglecting to acknowledge you in every way possible. Father, I declare to you on this day that you are my healer. Father, you are my deliverer. You are my redeemer. You are my comforter, Father God. You are my shield, Father. You are my helper. You are the living water that quenches my thirst, Father God. You are the Lord who heals my, all of my wounds, Father. You are my hope, Father God. You are my God of comfort, Father God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank Thank you, Father God. Today, Father, I especially need to know you, Father God. Today, I need to know you as the tower of safety, Father God. I believe you will be that to me and in covering, Father God. God, help me to set aside time each day to meet with you alone, to spend quiet time just getting to know you, Father. Enable me to resist and eliminate anything that would keep me from that task. Teach me to pray the way you want me to pray, Father God. Help me to learn more about you. Lord, you have said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Father God, I thirst for more of you because I am in a dry place without you, Father God. I come to you on this day and ask to drink deeply of your spirit. Father God, I lay all of these things at your feet in the throne room, Father God, and I ask all of these things in your son Jesus' name, now and forevermore. Let us say amen, amen, amen. That's how you compose that into a prayer. All of those different verses, all of those different scriptures, just go in and pray the word back as I always say, 
prayed the word back and it just gives me such peace it gives me such comfort giving him his word back because we know the scripture also tells us his word and his promises don't come back to us empty it does not come back to us void right it fills us when it comes back it helps to keep us on these divine assignments that we know that we're on it helps us to keep that strength when the enemy tries to come when opposition tries to come right it keeps us strong. I want to know God better and open to you, Lord. Yes, yes. I love you guys. I hope you heard something tonight that helped you out. If you heard something and you thought of somebody, add them to your prayer list, right? You don't have to go into work tomorrow. You don't have to go next door and say, you know what? I'm going to pray for you. That's not how any of this works. Just add them into your list. Stand in the gap for them. Pray on their behalf, right? Remember, go back to the scripture and ask the Lord, vindicate me, oh God, but vindicate them with love vindicate them with passion vindicate with the vindicate and show them that you are a god of comfort that you are a healer that you can deliver and that they can be redeemed all right until tomorrow night guys i love you i love you I started writing my prayers out too. It's called pray the word, give his word back. Yes, yes, I do that all the time. I do it all the time. And another reason I like to write those out because sometimes when people, you know, they bring situations, you know, and they and one of the first questions I say, have you prayed about it? Have you talked to God about it, you know? And as I talk with the different prayer watches, you may need to be praying. You may um, need to intercede during this time. You may be assigned this prayer watch, you know, so there's so many different things that go into it. So by writing them out, you know, I'm able to pass them along and say, pray this prayer, pray this word, especially, you know, for people that I'm just not sure what to play. I don't know anything about them scriptures, you know, because I know for me, it was intimidating picking the 66 books up, getting back in and saying, my gosh, where do I start? I just don't know where to begin, right? So when that person comes to you a lot of the time, oh, you don't know the Bible? Didn't you at least learn the Psalms when you was in? No, that's not how any of this works. So for those of you like, um, Mama Moses and myself that write your prayers out, you know, send them. Hey, do you need a couple of prayers that you can pray? These are very effectual prayers because they're coming straight from the word. Don't be adding no stuff off in there now. You know, if you add some stuff in, you know, make sure it's, it's from the word. Make sure you just pull it from the word. Don't be pulling no whoop de doop on, <laughs> on nobody, right? Give them pure prayers. I hope you guys have a um a wonderful time preparing for the holidays. Be safe out there. And remember, ask somebody, how you doing? You got family, you got friends, you know, you're gonna be working on the holiday. This is the season of giving, right? Give and it's always given back to us always give them back to us. I love you guys. Walk good. Do good. Be good. Tornado, I'm out. You all know the Torah. 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 Torah.